It's mailbag time here on Chicago Bears now. Before we jump into it, hey, the road to 33,000 subscribers has begun. We crossed 32,000 on Monday. Shout out to you guys. Let's get to 33K as soon as possible. Daily videos covering the latest Bears news, rumors, live streams every Tuesday, and then live watch parties as well. We do it all. Hit that big red button. It's youtube.com slash bears now. All right, I'm your host, Harrison Graham. As always, it's live Q&A time, so use hashtag Bears or Super Chat, and we will answer as many questions as we can. Let's catch up on the Super Chats first. Here's Tyrone. We need an offense like the Shanahan's uh, or the Browns, a good running offense in play action instead of whatever Nag is trying to run. Uh, I mean, yeah, you got a good back in David Montgomery. You could set up play action. Shanahan's offense would be beautiful. Uh, in Chicago, but his offense would be great everywhere. I think Nagy can make things work, uh, you know, maybe just play a little bit more to your player's strengths, which I actually thought he did that with Andy Dalton in week one, but Dalton has limitations. Braden next up, bear down Harrison Graham for Bears head coach. Hey, you know, I'm good at Madden. You don't want me being the Bears head coach. I, I, I'd probably be better than Mark Trestman, but, uh, you know, uh, you don't want me. Trust me. Cornelius, uh, appreciate the $2. 06 Bears defense or the 2018 Bears defense? That's tough, man. <sighs> I probably still lean 06. That, that team had, you know, probably slightly better leadership with guys like Brian Erlacher on it. But, you know, Lance Briggs as well. 18 was damn good, though. I mean, that you could go either way there. I think the 18 offense was better than the 06 offense. So if you had the 06 defense and the 18 offense, maybe that team makes a run to the Super Bowl. All right, Chris, next up. Could the Bears sign Richard Sherman? Saw the 49ers might bring him back. Uh, this is a good question, Chris. Richard Sherman, uh, I hadn't heard much about him at all since that, you know, that arrest and that incident uh, with the whole uh, driving under the influence or whatever the case was there. Uh, I will say that uh, the 49ers signed Drake Kirkpatrick. They're still interested in him, apparently. The Bears' corners have issues. We know that. So I'm certainly open to bringing him on board uh, and seeing what he can bring to the table. But, uh, you know, I don't know. Does he want to play for a team like Chicago? He probably only wants to play for a team that he knows can contend. And I think that's a question mark for the Bears this year. We don't know if this can be a team that makes a deep run. Uh, I will say this. Marquee Christian, he sucks. Like, he can't be your nickel Builder is, he's not very good. I guess he's sort of passable at CB2, but yeah. I mean, like, if Jalen Johnson gets hurt, you're screwed. You are, you have the worst CB unit in the NFL if that happens. So, yeah, I think you need to be actively looking to upgrade at that position. So what do you think? Should the Bears sign Richard Sherman? Type Y for yes. Type in for no. We'll make this the pinned comment on today's video. So get your Ys in, get your Ns in. Should the Bears sign Richard Sherman? Jay Reed, do you think we should have paid Fuller? I mean, I would have been down with an extension that would have lowered his cap hit for this year. It also would have, uh, what else would it have done? It would have, uh, you know, all, obviously uh, saved an issue at cornerback. That, that, that would have been huge for this team. So, yeah, I think that uh, there's a decent argument that the Bears should have paid Kyle Fuller. Hopefully, uh, this isn't, uh, this secondary gets figured out soon, but... I mean, keeping Jimmy Graham over four, obviously their contracts weren't equal, but uh, yeah, Jimmy Graham only played 15 snaps in week one, so they certainly miss uh, Kyle Fuller. Scott Osborne, all preseason, uh, great speed at receiver, not one deep ball attempted the whole game. That shows no confidence in your quarterback and offensive line. Defense, F-. minus. Uh, you know, if you watch, a lot of the tape will show you that the, Bear, the Rams took away the deep shots. Uh, I do think the Bears need to attempt more, uh, whether it's you know, dialing it up with different schemes. They try to pump and go in the second half, but Dalton got sacked. Uh, I do think part there's something to the uh, offensive line worry, Scott, that, uh, you know, it played better than expected, but a big reason was also getting the ball out early. So, yeah, you got to find some ways to take some shots downfield. Uh, but some of that was just the Rams were just schematically taking it away. Bincy, who deserves to be number three, Goodwin or Bird? Goodwin looked good in the opener, man. I, I like what he brought to the table, led the team in receiving, four catches, 45 yards. Uh, their snap counts were similar. Bird actually got more snaps by about six or seven plays. 
Uh, so I, I think they're pretty equal. I'll be curious to see if Brashad Perriman is active for week two. He was not active in week one, but uh, I like what I saw out of Marquise Goodwin. He played well in the season open. Matthew, any new news on Peters and Borum? The first injury report will come out on Wednesday. So we're filming this live on Tuesday. As of now, we don't know anything. By the time you watch this, we'll probably know more. So I, I can tell you this, Peters left with a quad injury, Borum an ankle. If I had to guess, Borum probably won't be available this game. His looked a little more severe. Hopefully it's not a high ankle sprain. Peters, I'm somewhat optimistic that he'll be able to play. If not, I've got uh, pretty decent concerns heading into the Bengals game. DJ Hurrah, do you th what do you think is wrong with Khalil Mack? This is a good question. Um, I, we have some stats on him, Jack. I think the producer Jack, we want to go to these. His last nine games, he's he's still getting pressures, but his numbers, I mean, we'll show you here. He's just kind of been a guy. Two and a half sacks in nine games, that's less than five sacks in a full season. That ain't good. Like, not for a guy you're paying – $23 million a year. He's got to be better than this. And I get it. He's getting double teamed. Robert Quinn's not doing his part, but elite players find ways. Khalil Mack, the last half season or so, has not been an elite player. He's still good, but he has not been a superstar. Xavier Javier, uh, we lost that Rams game because of the secondary. Our sucked and theirs was great. Jalen Ramsey, yeah, Ramsey was tremendous in that game. How do we fix it for the rest of the season? A lot of it's communication, number one. Uh, when you, when busted coverages happen like that, it, it's miscommunication. Uh, Eddie Jackson uh, or has to take ownership of this secondary. He's got to play better. He's got to get people lined up in the right spots. Tashawn Gibson's a, he's a, he's a veteran player. He's played ten years in this league. Jalen Johnson's got to take a hold of the cornerback room. Uh, Sean Desai has to make adjustments. So if you eliminate the busted coverage, sure, busted coverages, sure, you're still going to give up big plays. Uh, but you're not going to give up touchdowns where dudes are nowhere within 20 yards of the receiver. That, that can't happen. Uh, you got to force the offense to execute on you. Torian Whitfield, seems like the naggy fanboys are out in full force with the national media report repeating the phrase, Fields isn't ready, almost on loop. I don't think they're saying that. Like Adam Schefter never said, Fields isn't ready. What he said is, what he did is give it examples of guys who sat and learned and then balled out. Now, that being said, every situation is different, and Andy Dalton is not a, a superstar quarterback. Everyone keeps bringing up uh, Aaron Rodgers behind Brett Favre. Brett Favre was a Hall of Famer. Andy Dalton is a has been a solid NFL starter, but he's past his prime. So every situation is different. I think Fields is ready. I, I understand where you're coming from, but I don't think anyone's really saying he's not ready. I just think they're saying that – Sitting him could work. So, I don't know. It's a tough situation, Torian, but I, I do understand your frustration. Who do you guys think is going to win the NFC North? Because all four teams are 0-1 after week one. If you think it's going to be the Bears, type CHI. If you think it's going to be the Lions, type DET. If you think it's going to be the Packers, type GB. Vikings, type MIN. I know it was ugly, but, I mean, they're all 0-1. I'd still have to go with the Packers, although – them getting beat like that by the Saints does give me some hope that maybe this division's somewhat open this year. Um, the Vikings lost in overtime to the Bengals. Detroit rallied late, but they really got their ass kicked by San Francisco. So who knows? I mean, the Bears didn't look great, but maybe there's still a little bit of hope uh, for this division. And if you want to go gamble on the NFC North odds, there's only one place to do it. Bet US. Here are the betting odds right now. Packers minus 175. They're still the heavy favorites to win this division. Minnesota plus 225. The Bears at plus 500. Don't bet on the Lions. You're just lighting money on fire. If you want to bet on any of the other three teams, though, go to the link below. Chatsports.com slash Bears. Use our promo code BEARDOWN. That's going to get you 125% deposit bonus. Uh, and here's the deal. We still have our jersey giveaway deal through the end of week two. So if you go to chatsports.com slash bears, place a bet on the bears after you get your deposit bonus, bet on any game. Doesn't even have to be a bears game. After you follow those steps, email us jersey at chatsports.com. We'll get your uh, jersey size and we'll hook you guys up with a brand new jersey. We have some Justin Fields jerseys available in navy, white, orange. We also have these uh, inverted Khalil Mack jerseys available. Pretty good look right here. Jersey at chatsports.com to take advantage of this deal, but you got to follow the steps with BetUS, chatsports.com slash bears, use the promo code BEARDOWN, and then place a bet on any game between now and the end of week two. 
Jerzy Bears are we making moves to address the secondary with Eddie Jackson struggling and no CB depth? We need to be addressing our CB room. As we're filming this, no moves have been made. Uh, that can obviously change uh, between uh, now and uh, the end of the week. But uh, I don't know, man. I, I think a lot of the, the uh, moves need to be just adjusting the X's and O's. Obviously, I would like to upgrade at some of these player spots. I don't think Marquis Christian's a starting nickel in this league, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, I'm with you. I would be aggressive and try to go at a player, but uh, it's been pretty quiet so far. Gabriel Soto, the defense, was it Desai's fault or the players? Combination. Uh, you know, Gibson and and uh, Jackson are veteran players. They, they got to play better. Uh, the corners... You're somewhat inexperienced there after Jay even with Jalen Johnson. He's only a second-year player. But it's to me, it's on Desai. The busted coverages are on him. He's calling the defense. He's got to everybody ha get everybody in the right spot. Combination of him and I'll say uh, Eddie Jackson. Eddie Jackson, I'm looking at you right now. You've got to take ownership of the secondary. You've got to play better. You've got to be more physical when you're tackling and be that you know $10-plus plus million player per year that the Bears paid you to be. Tevay Dolly, how many seasons does Nagy need to show us he's not the guy? I mean, I know you guys all hate Nagy. I'm not going to say I'm the biggest fan. I have been a defender of his at times. Uh, he's he's 28 and 21 as a starter now through three seasons and one game here in the fourth season. I'm not saying that's great. That's much better than your last two coaches, though, here in Chicago. So, I mean, I think this year's going to play out, and we're really going to see how we feel about this guy. Um He's going to live or die by Justin Fields. That's what this comes down to. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully Fields gets in there soon and uh, he can ball out in Nagy's offense. Who is your least favorite Bears player? Normally we talk about your favorite, but who's your least favorite? I want to know. Is it Marquis Christian? Because he stinks. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's hard to pick a least favorite, but pick one for me. We're having fun. Let us know who your least favorite player is for the Bears. Couple more questions here. Josh Morrison, does Dalton's performance warrant any more discussion about the QB spot? Uh, rhetorical question. I'd like to see Fields in there. If you lose the Bengals, I think it's a no-brainer. You've got to make a change. He wasn't Dalton wasn't terrible, but he's got limitations. I don't think anyone's doubting that. Paris Howard, bring back Mike Brown for Eddie Jackson. That was somebody that could hit. Jackson's so, such a bad tackler. I, I think a lot of it is just want to. He's got to be a willing tackler. He was not always this bad. At, uh, hitting and tackling, so that's got to improve, no doubt. Aza Shaki, should Nagy give the play calling back to Laser? He's not going to do that after one game. He might later in the season, but uh, right now, uh, I don't think that's going to happen. If you do that after one game, you're conceding publicly that you're panicking, and you you can't do that. So I think you got to stay the course and uh, execute better. Joel Fernandez, will we see more of Justin Fields in Week Two? I think we will. Uh, played five snaps in week one. Maybe you double that, get ten snaps. Matt Nagy said they wanted to play him a few more, but once the game kind of got out of hand, they were in two-minute drill uh, most of the fourth quarter, and they didn't feel like swapping guys in and out really made a lot of sense. 